Hi guys, I am here today because I want to read to you a letter that I wrote. It is in response to a call to action that Florida Cares Charity has put out. And it says, now is the time to speak up. And they're wanting us to get together, y'all. Anybody in the Florida DOC, let's get together. These new rules and stipulations that they have over visitation, this really impacts our families and our loved ones on the inside, but our families as a unit. And I know the lawmakers, they don't understand this dynamic of a family, but we are still family. And those are still our loved ones. Getting through this hard time has been compounded. Just worrying about those of our loved ones that are behind those gates. So I'm gonna to read to you my letter. Hello, my name is Keita Dixon. This is in regards to the rules and stipulations placed upon visitation. I understand that the new procedures were put in place with attempts to keep people safe, but there just has to be another way that doesn't include further severing our already harder to maintain family ties. These rules may not affect some that are due to get out soon, but for my loved one that is serving an extensive amount of time, this is life changing. I actually raised my now 19 year old daughter with her father through calls, letters, and most of all visitation. Excluding visitation would mean that she would not have had any relationship at all with her father because now there are new age restrictions. She wouldn't know how it feels to hug her father or enjoy spending time together playing cards. Somewhat fortunate for her, she is now of age. But what about the countless other children that don't have one of their parents due to another pandemic, mass incarceration? That also brings up another issue. Upon trying to visit my loved one, I was told that because I am not physically married to my husband, though we share a deep bond that has matured over 20 years, and I am the mother of his daughter, because I am not immediate family, I am unable to visit him. I and my daughter are the only ones that faithfully visited my loved one over the last 19 years. Getting through this unprecedented time, what gave inmates hope was the fact that once things settled a bit, we can see our loved ones again. A tablet visit, email, or call, none of that can take the place of visiting my loved one. Yes, the food window might just be vending machine food to the untrained eye, but for years they have been our family's meals together, just like any other family that would enjoy dinner together. Trust me, the hope of visitation is one of the only things that is given our loved ones hope to get through this and ultimately the rest of their sentence. My nightmare with this situation goes as follows. During this pandemic, my loved one was two and a half hours away from home. He was transferred during, and now he is six and a half hours away from home now. That is going to be a bigger hardship to come. Now I have to pay for rentals and lodging for an only two hour visit. It used to be a full weekend, but I was willing to do that because I love this man more than anything. Through the whole pandemic, I have mainly worried about my husband because I see my other family members. I know if they're safe, but he, now I have to just hope and just wonder. Look who's holding me up, the postman. Come on, I gotta hurry up and make it. There's a deadline. The light turns red just as soon as I approach it. Come on now, I am trying to get my letter in. I gotta get this letter in, like, Really, this is really important. This visitation affects us, y'all. Oh, it's too late now. We're pulling in. Kristen, did you get that shot? All right. Okay, so that is upsetting. They said that it is $26, and I have to pay for overnighting to get it there on time. So I'm gonna see what else I can do. I can't pay $26 right now. 
I wish I had found this out earlier. It's the glass cow's lap.